Hey guys, welcome back. So this morning I have a really interesting and hopefully fun video for you guys. Right here to my left is a big wobbly block of clear ballistics gelatin. This is 10% ballistics gel. It's clear as you can see, and it is manufactured by the company Clear Ballistics. You've seen this stuff on the channel previously. I like using this stuff primarily because it's clear. You can see what's happening inside the gel after the bullet passes through, and also it's reusable. You can cut it up, melt it back down using a mold, and get it back into its original shape and go right back out to shooting. It's also stable at regular room temperature. You don't have to keep this stuff refrigerated. Now, I know a lot of you technical guys out there are going to say, well, it's not exactly the same thing as 10% ballistics FBI gel that you have to keep cooled. You're right, it's not, but that's not the point. As long as you, can, you consistently have a product that gives you similar performance, it gives you a steady baseline, you can conduct your testing. No, you can't take the results I get from this and compare that to FBI gel blocks that are refrigerated. But if I do all my testing in this ballistics gelatin, it's representative and I have a good baseline, which means it's still a valuable testing tool. I love this stuff and it's good stuff. So why do I have a block of ballistics gel sitting here that's the size of a, a torso? Well, that's because I also have a level 2A Kevlar body panel. I'm going to hang this in front of the gelatin block and I'm going to shoot it with an FN57 pistol. Now there's a number of different rounds available for the FN57 which is a 5.7 by 28 millimeter caliber pistol. It's a little bottleneck cartridge. looks very much like a 5.56. But the one that everybody wants to get is either the SS190 or the SS198 LF. I happen to have my hands on some of the SS198 LF. And this is an armor piercing round, has a green tip. It's a 27 grain bullet, and it is claimed that it can penetrate up to a 3A vest. Now again, I have a 2A vest. The reason why I'm using a 2A vest is because this is by far the most common vest worn in the United States. It's lightweight, you can see it's very thin. It's, it's comfortable to wear when you're wearing body armor on the front and in the back, if you have to sit in a car all day long, whatever. That's why level 2A is by far the most common, so that's what I'm using as a 2A panel. So I'm going to fire that from the handgun into that panel, but I also have some American Eagle, just 40 grain ball ammo, and some 40 grain VMAX FN ammo as well. So we're going to see what happens with the body armor. Now, I also brought out another pistol. This is a PMR-30 from Caltech. This is a 22 Magnum pistol. Why did I bring this out? I brought it out because a lot of guys on the internet say that the FN's 57 by 28 millimeter round is no more than a glorified 22 Magnum. I want to find out if that's true. I don't have a whole lot of ammunition to select from, but I do have some 30 grain VMAX 22 mag loads here. And we're going to fire that into the body armor as well. And we'll probably fire a few rounds into the gel just to see what happens there as well. So hopefully this will be a fun video for you guys. That's enough talking. Let's get out to the range, get everything set up, and start doing some shooting. I'll tell you what, guys. This thing is heavy. Uh, probably weighs 60, 65 pounds. All right. So it's leaning forward just a little bit. I'll probably set something underneath it. When you get one of these things, you want to make sure you put them on a flat surface. I've had this one laying on its back, setting upright, because it'll slowly take the shape of whatever it's sitting on or anything it may be laying on. But that's pretty good. I will put something underneath it, though. Take our threat level to a vest here. A little bit of tape. place, hopefully. Turns out tape doesn't stick so well to this stuff. I have to use a little bit more tape than I thought I was going to have to here. Take it over the back. There we go. pretty good. I'm going to leave the bottom loose so we can lift up the panel and look at the gel underneath it after we take a few shots. All right, so I think the torso is ready to go. First up, let's do the 5.7 pistol and let's use the American Eagle 40 grain stuff. This is just a ball round. We'll see if this will actually penetrate the body armor. All right. Load one round into the pistol and get ready to shoot. Let's see what happens.
All right, guys, it looks like that bullet did not penetrate. That was the 40 grain standard federal ball, seven yards. You can see where the bullet hit the vest. Did not penetrate. You can see there's no penetration in the vest, and you can see there's no hole in the ballistics gel. All right. You can see it's, now this little blemish here and these things, this is just handling marks and bubbles from manufacturing. There's no penetration of the bullet which would have came in right about here. All right, no penetration. Next, let's try the 40 grain VMAX. Load one round into the magazine here. Make the weapon ready. Let's see what happens. All right, so the 40 grain VMAX hit right there. And on the other side, there is no penetration. You see the bulge in the paper there, but there's no penetration in the gel. Looks like it made a nice indentation though. I don't know if you guys can see that. Kind of tore the gel a little bit. No hole, it just tore it just a little bit, left an indentation in it but no penetration. All right, interesting. Again, seven yards, 40 grain, VMAX FN load. Now the one we've all been waiting for, the 198 LF, green tip. Let's load one round of that into the 5.7. And once again, let's see what happens. That round penetrated the vest, came to rest about halfway through the gel. The gel is eight inches thick, about halfway through again, about, it went through the breast area here. So you're looking at about four, four and a half inches of penetration after it cleared the vest. Let's take a closer look at that for you. All right, there's the bullet setting in the gel. See it in there? This was the dead center hit here. So that was the federal ball, the FN VMAX, and that is the 198 LF. On the other side, you can see it blew through that vest it looks like it may have even, nah, I was gonna say it tumbled, but I don't know, I can't tell really. But you can see it blew that out. And then entered right down there, carrying a little bit of material with it. And then you can see the bullet through the gel. Gel's a little bit cloudy because it has dust on it. I had it sitting in my basement for a while. So let's give the PMR 3022 MAG a shot here. We'll take one round of the 30 grain VMAX. Load it into the magazine. And let's see what happens. So this is where the 22 mag from the PMR 30 hit, 30 grain VMAX. And it certainly looks like it penetrated. But the bullet's still in there, I can feel it. What happened is it hit with enough authority to actually separate that fabric, push some of the fabric into the gel, but there is no penetration. You can see there are no bullets in the gel behind the, the uh, point of impact, but still that's pretty impressive, pretty impressive. The results from the pistols are pretty much as I expected. The 198 LF penetrated the vest and it made it about four, four and a half inches into the gel. My glasses are fogging up here. Sorry, it's kind of humid in the range today. The 22 mag didn't penetrate, but it gave a good showing. And then the standard 40 grain federal ball didn't penetrate, nor did the VMAX, the Hornady VMAX out of the 5.7 by 28 millimeter handgun. So let's try something different. 
let's take my PS90 SBR, which has a 10 and a half inch barrel, which is considerably longer than the barrel that's in my FN57, about twice the, the barrel length. This is a bull pup, so the barrel comes all the way back to here. Let's try this with just a standard 40 grain federal ball round, right, non-AP, stuff's commonly available. Let's see what this does, again from seven yards. The 10 inch barrel of the PS90 SBR seems to have changed things significantly. Here's where it hit. You can see that wound channel running all the way through the eight inches of the gel. It exited right here. From this angle, you can see a pretty impressive wound cavity from what appears to be a tumbling bullet. So a standard 40 grain ball round from Federal becomes AP once you increase the velocity out of the longer barrel. It's actually pretty impressive results. I have to admit guys, I'm pretty impressed by the performance of the 40 grain ball round, the standard Federal round. So I'm going to give the Hornady VMAX, which is a standard FN load, again 40 grain, regular off the shelf stuff, non-AP. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fire this through the 10 and a half inch barrel, the PS90, and see what happens. Here's where the VMAX hit. Definitely penetrated. You can see the entrance right there. You can see bullet fragments. You can see the wound channel right here. See it shed quite a bit of its jacket, but it penetrated eight inches of ballistics gel. Not quite as impressive as the performance of the Federal 40 grain ball round, but impressive nonetheless. You can see bullet fragments had separated, but again, we had complete penetration of the gel. It was fun shooting the 22 Magnum and the 5.7 into the soft armor using the torso target, but now let's shoot the 22 Magnum and the 5.7 into a standard 16 inch FBI test block. Now again, this is clear ballistics gel, but it is 16 inches in length. I've left the torso man size behind it to capture the bullet just in case it actually penetrates the 16 inch block, which is a possibility but I'm going to use a 30 grain VMAX 22 Magnum. And just to keep things somewhat fair, I'm gonna use a 40 grain VMAX 5.7 by 28 millimeter. And again, we're going to use the PMR30 for the 22 mag, and we will use the FN57 for the 5.7 by 28 millimeter. So let's see just how similar or dissimilar the performance is between these two calibers in a standard FBI block. All right, first up is the 22 Magnum. 30 grain VMAX out of the PMR30. I have to say that's fairly impressive. The 22 mag entered right here. You can see the wound cavity. And it traversed almost the entire block coming to rest about a half inch from the end. All right, you can see the bullet down in there. From where I'm standing, it looks as though perhaps the bullet turned itself around completely backwards, which would make sense looking at that wound channel. So we have about 15 and a half inches of penetration. Pretty impressive out of that little 22 mag. All right, next up. The FN57 40 grain VMAX. All right, so the 5.7 entered right here. And you can see it traverse just below the 22 mag channel, which is right above it. Seemingly 
the channel stops there, but it doesn't. The bullet continues through the gel and comes to rest right there in the torso target behind it. So if I line the tape measure up, get it unstuck. We have about 17 and a half inches of penetration on the 5.7 VMAX. Looking at the wound channel above, this is the 22 mag, this is the 5.7, 22 mag, pretty impressive. Certainly has enough penetration to do some damage. And of course the 5.7 as well has plenty of penetration. So this is the 5.7 round, and this is the 22 round. You'll notice they retained their jackets, their cores are intact. The only thing that they lost were their ballistic tips. Now I will say that the 5.7 deformed slightly more. You can see more deformation in the, in the tip of the bullet than you can on the 22 mag. Again, this is the 5.7, this is the 22 mag. But I was impressed with the performance of this 30 grain VMAX 22 Magnum. Obviously the 5.7 has an advantage, but that 22 mag did better than I thought it would do. I hope you guys enjoyed the video this afternoon. And I want to say that this is not a scientific test, okay? I understand that and I hope you understand that. This was just for fun, but I wanted to see how well the 22 Magnum stacked up against the 5.7. I see all the discussions on the internet when I posted pictures of my 5.7 pistol on Instagram. I got a couple of comments like saying it's a glorified 22 mag. So I just wanted to find out. Now I will also admit I do not have a whole lot of experience with the 22 Magnum. This kel PMR30 I borrowed from a guy here at the shop. He just picked it up. It's actually a nice handgun, by the way. Function 100%. It's lightweight, ergonomic, has a nice trigger. I like the handgun. It's pretty cool. If you're looking for a 22 mag auto loader, you might want to take a look at one of these. Uh, but again, I have not that much experience with the 22 Magnum. Now the 5.7, I've owned several of these handguns in the past. And of course, I've owned my SBR now for several years. I enjoy shooting my PS90 SBR quite a bit. So what did I learn? Well, I learned that neither one of these handguns, the PMR30, nor the 5.7 with just regular off-the-shelf commercial ammunition will penetrate level 2A body armor. Now that changes, of course, when you step up to the law enforcement restricted uh, 198 LF ammunition from uh, FN, the 5.7 out of a handgun now becomes capable of penetrating that body armor, but we only saw about four or so inches of penetration into ballistics gel. It's not going to deliver an extremely lethal blow. It could certainly kill somebody, but um, I, I wouldn't say that the performance with that 198 is spectacular, but it did defeat the body armor. Now, it's claimed that it can de defeat the three, uh, 3A, I'm sorry, body armor. I have no idea. I don't have a 3A body armor panel here to test. Here's the panel that we shot. I'll probably save it. Looks like it has a few more places I can hit it again in the future. Now, I was not able to shoot the 22 Magnum out of a rifle. I don't have a 22 Magnum rifle here that I can use, so I was limited to shooting it out of the handgun. But what we did learn is when I increased the barrel length of the 5.7 using just commercial ammunition, again this is a 10 and a half inch barrel out of my SBR, the standard commercial ammunition, both the VMAX and the Federal Ball, penetrated quite easily the vest and then cleared 8 inches of gel and went on to hit the bullet trap behind it. Quite impressive and I did not expect that. I didn't expect that type of performance. I figured it might penetrate the vest, but I didn't think it would also clear eight inches of ballistic gel. So I was, was quite impressed with the performance of that. Now, when it comes down to discussing whether or not I would carry the 22 Magnum or the 5.7 as a personal defensive handgun, the answer to that question is no, I wouldn't carry either one of them. It's not because I think either one of them are not per capable of, of defending myself with. It's just not a caliber that uh, either one of those calibers aren't calibers I would choose for personal protection. I prefer to stick with nine millimeter and sometimes 380 as a little pocket pistol. But I will not say that the 5.7 is a poor choice, nor really even the 22 mag. I mean, just taking a look at the ballistics gel results, I mean, it really performed admirably. So if you choose the 5.7 or even a 22 mag, I don't think you're poorly armed. But again, it's just not for me. If you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, you can ask those questions on our Facebook page. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash military arms. Also, please swing by and check us out on Instagram. I like to post behind the scenes stuff over there. And also, please swing by and check us out on coppercustom.com. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. We'll talk to you guys soon.